In this video, we are looking at applications of exponential models. Specifically, we're dealing with problems pertaining to half-life. Radioactive elements decay according to the exponential model. Some amount of a radioactive isotope will be left behind given an original amount and multiplied to this expression, e to the power of kt, where t is the time and k is the rate of decay. In order to easily compare the rate of decay of several different isotopes, we can look at a quantity called the half-life of each one, which is the amount of time it takes for half of a substance to decay. With this model, it means that our final amount will be half of the original amount, and we can solve this exponential equation. We can divide the original amount from both sides. It's important to notice that since we can do that, it means that the half-life of an isotope is independent of how much of it we start with. Whether you start with a little or a lot, it's going to have the same half-life. It will take the same amount of time for half of that sample to decay. If we take natural log both sides of this equation, we see natural log of 1 half equals the product of k and t the rate of decay, and the amount of time it takes to decay by one half. This is a very important expression. It leads to two very useful relationships. If we were to solve this equation for t to get an expression for the half-life, we will see that the half-life equals natural log one half over the rate of decay k. And with this expression and how we got there, hopefully you could see that if we were dealing with quantities like a doubling time, how long it takes for a, a sample to double in size, then we would use the expression natural log of 2. Or a tripling, we would use natural log 3. Or if we were dealing with quarter life, how long it takes to decay to 25% of its original amount, we could use natural log of 1 fourth. So this is a useful expression to know. And if we go back to the, this equation and solve for k, we can see that you can find out what the rate of decay is if you know the half-life. Natural log of 1 half divided by that half-life time equals the rate of decay k, which we can use in this exponential model. So let's take this information into three example problems. The first example, the half-life of uranium-232 is 68.9 years. How much of a 100 gram sample is present after 250 years? Well, first of all, let's still talk a little bit more about what half-life means. If we're talking about 100 grams of a sample, and the half-life, let's just call it 70 years right now, the 100 gram sample will decay to 50 grams after 70 years. Now we won't lose another 50 grams over the next 70 years, we'll only lose half of what we currently have. So we'll go from 50 grams down to 25 grams after the next half-life, after the next 70 years. So we're down to 25 grams after 140 years. We'll cut that in half down to 12.5 grams after the next 70 years. So after 210 years, three half-lifes approximately, we'll see that we'll be down to 12.5 grams. So I just wanted to point out that we can get some good approximations going, a good estimate going, based on what we know what a half-life is, what it represents. So cutting the amount in half every 68.9 years. But let's find an exact answer working with the formula. We've got an original amount we're looking for an amount after 250 years, but we don't know the growth rate k. But we do have that equation that will find the growth rate k if we know the half-life. So k equals natural log of 1 half over 68.9 years. Now we can go back to the exponential model. The amount left after 250 years equals the original amount, 100 grams, times e to the kt. So here's our expression for k. I haven't turned it into a decimal yet, just because I want to save rounding for the very last step of the problem. So I'm keeping my value of k exact by writing it exactly this way, and our value for t time 250 years. So let's go step by step. The natural log 1 half over 68.9, you should get a decimal about negative 0.01. 
but I won't be using negative 0.01 as a decimal. I'm keeping the entire value in my calculator, and I will not round until the very last step. So when I multiply by 250, this is what I see in my calculator for the first few decimal places. e to this power, I get approximately 0.081, and then multiplying by 100, approximately 8.086 grams. And that does fall in line with our estimate before we looked at the exponential model. We said after 210 years, approximately, we'll be down to 12.5 grams. So we've gone 40 years beyond that, so we should decay beyond 12.5, and we're down to 8, approximately 8 grams. Let's go to the second example. The half-life of cobalt-60 is 5.3 years. If an old sample of 10 grams has now decayed to 1 gram, how much time has passed? Let's still go right to our exponential model. Again, we need the value of k, the growth rate, which we can find using this expression, natural log 1 half divided by the half-life. But what is it this time that we're trying to find out of our exponential model? We actually know our final amount is 1 gram. We know the original amount was 10 grams. We've got the growth rate. We're interested in finding how much time has passed to go from 10 grams down to 1 gram. So as we fill in the exponential model, now we do have a final amount, 1 gram, equals 10 times e to the power of kt. Now this time we're solving the equation for t. To do this, we want to isolate this exponential part first. Let's get rid of the coefficient 10, dividing it on both sides. Now the exponential part is isolated. Let's do the natural log on both sides. Natural log of 1 tenth equals what we just had for our exponent, natural log 1 half over 5.3 times t. And the last step to solve for t, the time that it takes to go from 10 grams down to 1 gram, we will be dividing by this expression both sides, natural log 1 half over 5.3. So here is our exact value of t. We could do some simplifying here of this complex fraction, but instead I'm going to go right for my decimal answer. So on top, approximately negative 2.3 in the denominator, approximately negative 0.13, but again, I'm not rounding until I actually divide these two numbers in the calculator, and we get approximately 17.6 years. This should fit in with our idea of what the half-life represents. So f it takes five years to be cut in half. Let's go, go just approximately. So five years to go from 10 grams down to 5, another five years to go down to 2.5 grams, another five years to go down to 1.25 grams, and a little bit more to go all the way down to just 1 gram. So let's hit this last example. A 30 kilogram sample of plutonium-239 will decay by 1 kilogram in 1,180 years. So what is the half-life of plutonium-239? Again, I like to go right to my exponential model to figure out exactly what information I have and what information I need to find. We know a final amount, again, we're dealing with it's decayed by 1 kilogram, so finally it has 29 kilograms. We started with 30 kilograms. We don't know the growth rate. We don't know the, the half-life. Well, we do know time. We know that it's taken 1,180 years to decay by that single kilogram. So we do have a value for time. We're actually looking to find k. And we can't go right to that equation for k that we've been using before because we knew the half-life. This time, we don't know the half-life and we don't know the growth rate k, so we actually need to find that first. And if we put in all the information that we do have, we have a final amount of 29 kilograms. We started with 30. We are looking for the growth rate k, but we know that time, 1,180 years. Let's solve this equation. It will be similar to the example that we just looked at, where we are solving for a variable that is up in the exponent. So let's first isolate the exponential expression, divide both sides by 30, then natural log. Lastly, to solve for k, we're dividing by 1,180. So here's our exact value of k, and now we can go right to the formula for finding half-life. It was natural log of 1 half over k. 
So natural log 1 half is approximately negative 0.693. My value of k after doing the natural log of this fraction and dividing by 1180, that was a very small result, but I didn't round it off before this division. I kept both results exactly in the calculator and then did the divide, and we get that the half-life is about 24,126 years.